Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. So a couple of videos ago, I did a uh, video called Don't Use Calculate, where I sort of picked on the uh, running total quick measure a bit uh, and showed how it doesn't work in single table models because of the way Calculate does things. Um, you know, go watch that video. You may or may not agree with using Calculate or not using Calculate, but uh, maybe it'll give you a different perspective. Um, so then in the last video, I sort of took another took on another quick measure at the end. It was more about debugging DAX, but I took on another quick measure at, at the end called average per category and just the complexity of it and how they worked in Calculate. And there's a far simpler way of doing it. And I also criticized it for using values, um, which I don't agree that there's any case that you're going to want to use values, uh, the function values. And, and that's what is going to be the subject of this video. Now, I. I wrote about this over t about over two years ago about how you shouldn't be using value or values and you should be using uh, distinct um, or you know, there's other ways of doing this and th these these two functions are just useless primarily um, and it's interesting so in the documentation for values if you come down here and you go to the related functions it basically says hey values and distinct are both the same thing um, they both remove duplicates and return a list of possible values in the specified column then it makes this odd statement. I find it odd. However, the values function can also return a blank value. Sorry, that's not the odd, odd, odd one. The blank value is useful in cases where you're looking up distinct values from a related table, but the value used in the relationship is missing from one table. In database terminology, it's true referential violation of reference will take it. Okay, the question I have is, is useful? When in, when in fact is that blank value useful exactly? I'd love for somebody to tell me that one. Because I don't, because I'm gonna, what I'm going to go through today is it is highly not useful, um, and actually it causes you a lot of problems, um, and that is the demonstration that I'm going to be doing today. Okay, so I've got a bunch of measures that I've created and some card visuals uh, that I've got been hit that I've hidden. So we're going to start with measure two. So here in measure two, you know, I'm going to uh, I should show you the data model first. That would be helpful, Greg. Okay. So in, I've got a super simple data model. Here I've got a column one and it's one, two, and three. And I've got a column three, which is just kind of like a category column, which is red, red, blue. Okay, and then that is related to table three on column one. So here I have one, two, three, four. Okay, and then some values in column two. One, five, 100, and 1,000. Okay, and they are related in the data model on column one. Right. And crucially, right, I have a value in column three that has no corresponding value in table two, and that is our four row or a thousand. Right. OK, so let's get into this. So measure two, all I'm going to do is I say I want to concatenate X, the values from table two, column one. Right. And I'm going to return column one and put a comma separator in there. All right. So let's unhide this visual and see what that returns. OK, so I get a one comma two comma three comma. Uh oh. So there's a there's a blank value coming back here. And I can tell that because I have an extra comma here, um, even though that value is blank. Um, versus, right, if I use distinct, and it's the same exact formula for distinct, concatenate x distinct, table two, column one, et cetera. If I unhide that visual, see there's no comma. There's no extra blank value, right? Now let me explain, you know, and the interesting thing about this is that okay so i'm using that related column right what if i use the unrelated column column three from table two all right so that's what this guy does concatenate values from table two column three return column three with a comma between them all right what happens in that case all right let's see i get red blue and uh-oh i've got my blank i got my blank in there and i can further prove this um if i go into measure four that's measure four, measure five, uh, and I do a count rows across that same thing, right? Count rows, table two, column three. If I unhide that visual, you can see I do, in fact, have three values coming back. So one, two, and then the blank value three. Right, so how can this get you in trouble? Well, let's say that you want to take all your distinct values from column three, and you want to sum up the related columns from column from table three, from table three. So take my distinct values from column three, table two. So that's red, blue, 
right? And I want to sum up the related um, value columns in column two from table three. Okay, I just want to sum those all up, right? So what happens when you do this? So I'm using values here, as you can see, right? So I grab the values that should be red, blue, and I'm going to get a blank in there. And I'm going to sum up from column two. So any guesses as to what this is going to add up to? Well, let's take a look. It adds up to 3,318, which I'm pretty sure no one would have guessed that that is what <laughs> the number that would have come back. OK, so again, if we look at our data, right, we have 1,106. OK, so if that was to do it twice, right, one for red and one for blue, you would get you would end up getting 2,212. If you do it three times, you get 3,318, which is what's coming back here which is probably not what you want, right? Uh, you want you want to add up the red and the green, the red and the uh, green categories, the red and blue categories, uh, but now you've got an extra extra uh, blank row in there, so you, you tax on another 1,106 onto that number. And I can't imagine that's what anyone wants, right? Okay, so we're on to tell you, we're on to measure seven now. So measure seven. OK, so yeah, let's go and actually look and see what's actually being returned. So I will go and prove to you what is going on. And as you can see, I have my red 1106, I have my blue 1106, and I have my blank value 1106, and that's how I get to my 3318. All right, but now you're probably saying, Greg, you're an idiot. You don't have calculate in this function, so you know, obviously it's, it's a bad function. It's a bad formula, you know, terrible. OK, fine. Let's take that same logic, <laughs> same just twisted brain logic from our uh, average per category. This is the same formula. OK, so when you do an average per category, this is, you get back this weird construct. The only difference being we're taking a sum X across it versus an average X across it. So I have my calculate sum, table three, column two. Heap filters values, table two, column three. And so this is this is it, right? There. This is what I covered in my last video is the the weirdness of this construction. I said, let's see what this brings back. It brings back 1,106. 1,106. Now think about this. Think about this. I'm getting from table two, I'm getting my red and my blue, right? Those are related. There's only three rows in which are going to are possibly could relate to table table four, table three. So it should be 106. Right? 106. So I have my red is going to match my one, and my it's going to match my two, which is adds up to six. And it's going to match my three, which adds up to a hundred. So that's 106. Where how'd the four, how'd the thousand get in there? How do we get a thousand in there? Good luck trying to figure it out. Good luck trying to debug this and figure out how the thousand got in there. Well, a thousand got in there because of the blank. Okay. And <laughs> this is the short story. Um, the values, when it returned back a blank, you know, it's it, it then it it's going to sum up for that blank row, which is you know the sum of the blank, the non-matching rows is a thousand because it's that's the four row, right? So that's not right. This is why this kind of logic and doing things this way with calculators is a bad idea. All right, so what's a better way of doing this? Well, this is you probably saw this from my last uh, video. Was this summarized by the value summit and concatenate X, and et cetera, et cetera? This is the debugging stuff. So let's go ahead and unhide measured. And here we go. This returns back what we're looking for. It returns back that red adds up to six and blue adds up to 100, which is what we want. So by not using that average per category weird weirdness, right, we can actually, the better average per category, which is essentially this construction gives us the right answer. So let's see, uh, measure 10, measure 10. So in this one, I just use my sum X across that table. 
Right. And do I get the right answer for measure 10? Yes, there I do. I get the right answer for measure 10. OK, now that average per category, it's salvageable. OK, it really, it really is. Um, if we can get rid of that stupid values function, which add, which is useless. OK, and how do we do that? Well, instead of using this is the same exact formula. So instead of using values, just use distinct. And lo and behold, we get the right answer. There it is, 106. It's using this stupid, crazy, whatever this is. But you know, that's why I mentioned in the last video, values is a bad idea. Um, it's gonna give you weird results. Um, you're gonna get yourself in trouble with it. Don't use it. Distinct can be used for everything values can be used for, except if you want that blank row, which I, I, it's, I can't think of a reason why you'd need it. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so anyway, so what else do we got here? Um, got a measure 14 here. Oh, okay. So values is also extremely, extremely limited. Um, so if I would go back to here into my values doc fun function documentation, it requires a table name or column name, which means it cannot handle a table expression. Okay. So let's go back and go back to oops, this guy. All right, so if I were to construct a measure like this, you can see already it's not going to work, right? So I'm trying to do, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to um, filter out the three row and then return my category, my column three categories, all right? So if I filter out the three row from table two, right, I should just get red. So all I'm looking for is to get back a distinct value of red, except that this doesn't work because it's not a reference to a column or a table name. Okay, so when I try to use this in a measure, obviously, is bad. All right, distinct has no such limitations. So if I were to use distinct, if I were to, all I did was replace values with distinct. Distinct can handle a table expression something that returns a table, not a reference to a table, right? Or a reference to a column. Distinct can handle it's something, you know, anything that returns a table of values, any expression. So if I do that, then I unhide this guy and I get red. There it is. How about that? So distinct is way more flexible than values um, <laughs> in that regard. It doesn't have to refer to something physically in the data model. Right, I can create, I can craft up any kind of filter or expression that I want, and distinct will work across it. Um, so now there's another form of values um, which can be used, which in we're not referring to a table or a column, we're referring to a table, right? So I can do something like this: table four equal values table. I get, I get my table, my table three, okay? Except that this is useless because I can write the exact same expression without using values and get the same result. All I have to do is refer to my table. Why don't, what the heck do I need to wrap that in a values function for? Useless. All right, so now on to the last few ones here. So I also talk about the value function in that blog article. So the value function, you can do things like, all the value function does is convert text to a number if it can. Right, so here I have value one plus one, um, and I can unhide that visual, and obviously it, re it returns two. Okay, except again, useless um, because you don't need it. DAX internally converts numbers or text to numbers if it can, right? In context, in, in the context of there, so you can write, you know, not wrap it in values, just have text one plus one, and guess what? You also get two. So you, some of the most useless functions in all of DAX, values and value. There's just, I, I you know, don't use them. I, I hate seeing the, the use of those inside the, the quick measures within Power BI Desktop because it encourage, I feel like it encourages people like, oh, this is the right way to write DAX. No, man, that you do, you do not want to go down that path. And I see it a lot in the forums. People are using values function, you know, in the forms and that, and it, it makes me cringe every time because it's like you are going to get yourself in trouble doing th doing things that way. So, 
that is all for uh, Microsoft Hates Greg to, uh, today. And I hope this was valuable to you. And uh, uh, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. But I will see you, you all next time.